For each of the past six days, the number of new coronavirus cases has slowed to fewer than 10. That's down from a daily peak in the high 80s after more than four weeks lockdown in our bubbles. Today's numbers, five new confirmed or probable cases, bringing New Zealand's total to 1,456. And sadly, there's been another death. Tipunaha Matatini, the Centre for Research Excellence, modelled the worst case scenario for COVID-19. Left unchecked, it predicted the virus would eventually affect 89% of New Zealand's population and kill up to 80,000 people. So what do these latest figures tell us? Cause for celebration or concern still? Auckland University Professor Sean Hendy led the research team and joins us now via Skype. Evening, Sean. Can I just start off with Winston Peters looking at this idea of an extended bubble across the ditch with Australia? Looking at their figures and our figures, is that is that a conceivable option? No, I, I think it is. Um, you know, Australia is on a similar path to us. Um, like us, they moved relatively quickly. They were a bit further ahead in the epidemic, perhaps, than us, but their measures seem to have been quite effective. So if both countries track towards elimination, then that's something we might be able to look to do. I mean, I'd be cautious about opening up the borders as a floodgate. You know, I'd want to sort of see it phased in slowly, um, you know, perhaps having uh, family members reconnected who've, who've been separated across the Tasman by the lockdowns, um, and then maybe eventually looking to more widespread uh, travel. But it's something we want to be cautious about, but certainly it's a possibility. What would you need for that to happen? So would both countries need to have a reproduction rate or the spread rate under one in order for you to do that? You know, the the Uh, infection rate to one person? Yeah, we have to keep it under one for quite a long period of time. We really have to get those numbers down to just handfuls of cases, cases that are, you know, uh, below those that we're seeing at the moment. I mean, it's very encouraging what we're seeing at the moment, and we've got a very low R naught number, but we need to keep that in place and keep that low for the you know next couple of months um, and really, really be sure that we've, um, we've not got undetected spread um, out there in parts of the country or likewise in parts of Australia. I mean, we've seen Singapore recently. Um, it looked like it was tracking very well. It was one of the early countries that we followed and were looking to. Um, and they've had a second wave um, come back. You know, unfortunately, you know, we're not, we, there's not a lot of immunity to this disease, even with this, the cases we've had. Um, so, we, you know, the possibility of reinvasion of the disease is, is, is very strong. So where are we at at the moment in terms of the spread? So if a person is infected, how many other people are they on average infecting at the moment? At the moment, it's less than a half. Um, so so that's what you need to eliminate. You need to keep it down. I mean, we we, we, re, we look at this every week. Last week, we were at uh, Sorry to 0.5. interrupt. Sorry, Sorry to interrupt, but under 0.5, does that, for all intents and purposes, equal elimination? Only if you keep it in place for long enough. It's telling you that you're slowing the um, the spread of the disease down, and eventually, if you keep that if you keep that number that low um, for another few weeks, uh, then we'll actually, you know, we'll, we'll be very close to elimination. At what point would you be comfortable calling it elimination? One month at that level, two months, or when? Um, so, so uh, you know, this is this is this is something that the epidemiologists epidemiologist debate is what exactly does does elimination mean? I mean, I'd be very, I'd be comfortable personally um, from our modelling point of view that if we see a number of days with no cases. Um, and that sort of thing, you know, we might start to see that in a few weeks. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Given you're looking at modelling in numbers, what is your prediction for when we will get to the first day with zero cases? Can you give us a rough idea? It's, it's a little bit hard for us to predict that at the moment because we don't know how well Level 3 is going to work. I mean, one of the things that we're, we were concerned about was Anzac Weekend. If we'd come off Level 3 going into Anzac Weekend and, and everybody just sort of headed out, to see their friends to the beach, um, then that could have reignited the, um, the spread of the disease. So we, we've got to really wait and see for a, for a little while, 10 days uh, or so, a week to 10 days into level three before we'll start to get an idea of how well level three is working. And then we'll be able to make a, uh, make a call about when elimination might be likely. Can you explain to me, watching this, clusters, some of our biggest clusters are still growing. How can that be when we've been locked down for more than a month? Yeah, well, part of this is to do with contact tracing and testing. So we're still 
people are still working through and identifying some of these um, some of these cases. Um, so the disease takes a while to incubate, and then symptoms come on a little bit later. So it can take a while to to close the envelope um, around those clusters, and I think that's what we're seeing going on. So it, it could be both a lag in identification and a lag in contact tracing. It could be both of those factors. Yeah, yeah. I think I think those things that you know there are some clusters that have taken a long time for them to to track down. And of course, as you ex- as that bubble expands out, um, you know, as you go out further and further into the cluster, you've got to talk to more and more people. So it can take a long time to to really draw a circle um, around the cluster. You know, one of the reasons we've got to do that, one of the reasons we're seeing quite large clusters is because we've brought the numbers down and that's given time for our contact tracers to actually go out and do that. In other countries around the world, you know, their contact tracing has just been overwhelmed by the number of cases. Um, And so that's why perhaps our clusters, you know, look large perhaps compared to some of those that have been identified in other parts of the world. If we're at 0.5 in terms of spread rate, where would you get uncomfortable in level three? Where would you think that we need to be going back to level four? What number would have you saying, nup, we've got to go back to lockdown? I, I think if we start getting back into double digits um, in a couple of weeks' time, that, that's that'll be a that'll be a suggestion to us. I mean, you know, we're talking about very small numbers, so they will. When fluctuate. you say double digits, do you mean the number of new cases coming through? The number of new the number of new cases that we identify uh, per day. So that would start to give us some alarm, um, and then we, I think we'd st- have to start having a discussion uh, about you know, and it'll depend on the type of cases. It could just it could be a cluster. That, that we discovered that was relatively well defined and that we were confident well you know that we had ring fenced um, but if we started to see sort of double digits of um, uh, community transmission cases we couldn't tie into one another um, then we'd start to be quite alarmed and we, I think we'd have to restart the conversation about level four just quickly is two weeks at level three long enough to know whether we're getting ourselves back into trouble or we're doing okay yeah, I mean, I, that's a that's a good that's an excellent question. <laughs> We're looking at that at the moment. It's actually pretty, you know, it'll be pretty hard for us to tell. I think unless level three is really bad, you know, if, if level three is really not working for us and we see a quick resurgence, then we'll probably be able to call it by then. If level three is sort of middling or quite good. Um, it, you know, we may be still a little bit uncertain, but that's sort of a sign in itself. If we're still a little bit uncertain as to exactly how effective level three is, then we can perhaps be confident about shifting to level two. But that's a big, you know, level two is a big deal. You know, it, it, it does reopen an awful lot of the economy. And, it, it, you know, and so we will have to be cautious when we go back to level two. Um, and again, avoid just sort of going crazy and uh, and and, you know, heading to the beach and just being cautious and keeping our, keeping our physical distancing. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. That is Professor Sean Hendy, who has been crunching the numbers all through this crisis.